Hello, I'm Jose with FreeSky North America. Today's topic is setting up thrust vector mixes. I will go through a single nozzle setup where thrust vector is available for yaw and pitch. I will also add trims for the thrust vector rudder and for thrust vector elevator. Okay, I have a model already set up over here. And it's got a basic ailerons, elevator, throttle, rudder, and flaps. What we need to do now is add a couple of mixes for thrust vector rudder and thrust vector elevator. I'm going to go over here, and on any of these, you can hit enter over there and add, and this will add a new mix. I'm going to choose free mix, last position, let's just say, and I'm hitting delete by hitting the center button over here. And now let's call this TV um, elevator. So TV Ella. Active condition always on is fine. Source will be the elevator stick. And if I go to the bottom, I want to add a new channel. And this is what I plug in the thrust vector um, servo, the elevator servo into. So let's just say channel seven is fine. Yes. Okay. And that's basically it for the thrust vector elevator. Now, obviously we can add some more stuff to it, but for now, let's just say that's it. Let's add a new mix for thrust vector. So add free mix last position. And this one will be for the thrust vector rudder. And delete. So T V rud. Okay. Source will be the rudder stick. And the output will be the next available free channel, which is say eight. Okay. So we are done with that. Now we have to do a couple of things. We want a switch that will turn these mixes on and off, and we want to add a couple of trims. So we have trims of, uh, available for these. So let's say that you're maintaining your plane and you notice that when you give it thrust, um, that the plane rises, but if you're off thrust, then the plane is level. What that means is um, the nozzle is probably pointed um, up just a little bit. And because of that, when you give it um, throttle, then now it pushes the nose up. So it's always good to have trim for these other surfaces as well. So these, I, I would treat these like surfaces that need to have a trim. Um, even though it is thrust vector, it's essentially working like the surfaces work. So obviously it needs to be a different trim than your elevator trim and your rudder trim. So we need to add a couple of trims. Now you can, if you want, use, say on this radio, this radio has two extra trims. We can use those two extra trims, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use a VAR that is repurposed trim. So when I'm in thrust vector mode, for example, so let's say I'm going to use this as my thrust vector switch, the up will be thrust vector off, middle position will be thrust vector on with trim, and maybe the bottom position would be thrust vector on without trim adjustments, okay? So... Let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to VARs. No VARs yet. Let's add a VAR. Let's name this one TV for thrust vector elevator trim. Actions over here. Add a new action. And on a switch position, say the middle switch position for this, this is going to be thrust vector off at the top. The middle position will be thrust vector on with the ability to adjust a trim. And the bottom position will just be thrust vector on. So let's go ahead and make this one the middle position. And over here it says add, change that to repurpose. Trim rudder, let's make it trim elevator. And one, I think, is fine. It's just, I think that's a good uh, amount. And if you take a look, so this is it. This is my VAR that essentially, when this switch is thrown, when that switch is in the SD middle position, my trim elevator is no longer working for elevator, but it'll work for thrust vector. 
So that's good. And let's add one more. T V Rud. Trim. Same thing. I'm going to do it with the switch in the middle position. Repurpose. Trim rudder is correct at one. And that's it. So now when the switch is in the middle position, my elevator and my rudder trim um, are now repurposed and these trim buttons become trim for something else. So now all we got to do is add those trims in those mixes. So I'm going to go to model mixes, go over here to TV elevator, edit it. And then over here, add a new action. And the action that I want to add is going to be an offset. Offset when active. Right now it's just a value amount. So I can go over here and make it an offset, just a sort of like a trim. But instead of a value, what I want to do is I want to hit and hold down and go to use a source. And the source that I want is a VAR. And in this case, I'm working with the elevator is TV elevator trim. Okay, so if I get out of that, that's it. Let's do the same thing for the other one. Rudder, edit. And on the rudder, we're going to add the um, TV rudder trim uh, var in here. So add a new action. And the action that I want is offset. And again, press and hold, use a source, and bars, and this one will be the rudder version, so the rudder trim. Get out of that. All right, so get out of that all the way. And there we go. So now that rudder trim will trim when this switch is in this position. Now, the next thing that I need to do is I need to create um, a time when this mix is not active. So when this switch is up, then the, um, uh, so for example, TV rudder will go back to center. It'll stay in center and the rudder will not control it. So you can turn off and on your thrust vectoring. A lot of people don't like to take off and, and land uh, with thrust vectoring. If they're gonna do normal flight, not do any 3D stuff, they don't want thrust vectoring on. So we wanna be able to turn that on and off. Now, most people would go over here and go to active condition and assign that to a switch. The problem with that is we now have the ability to trim this. And when we turn off this mix, we also turn off the trim. So let's just say that like um, the rudder over here had a little bit like maybe 10% of trim going this way. When you turn off this mix, it'll go back to center. So it's kind of important that this mix not turn off, but it still goes back to center. So the way that we're going to do that is with a curve and turn on and off that curve. So over here, let's add a new action. And the action that we want is going to be a curve. The curve type will be add, so create one. And name of this, let's call it neutral. Oops, there it goes. And type is gonna be a custom curve, two points. Point one is gonna be zero and point two is gonna be zero. That's it. So what we're doing is we're creating a curve where wherever we move this stick, it'll stay at zero. See that? Doesn't matter, it's just gonna be center. But what we'll do is we'll change the active condition of this to be when this switch, this is my thrust vector on and off switch, is in the up position. 
So in the up position, this curve will override everything else and not allow you to do anything. So see, if you, you move the stick over here, it just stays in the center. So in other words, it doesn't move. So let's take a look at this. Right now, output is at zero. Output's still at zero, but now I can move it. But if I flip this switch to the top position, it'll just go back to zero to the center position. And the reason why I do it this way with curve instead of doing an active condition on and off is if we have a trim. So remember my trim is when I put my thrust vectoring trim is when I put the um, switch into the middle position. So now this rudder trim is now my for my thrust vector. So looking at my output over here, here's my rudder control. I can now trim it and everything trims just like you'd think it would. But now if I turn this off, this mix is still active because I didn't do it at the active condition at the top over there and that should have stayed. The reason why it didn't, again, is order of operations. I cover this in the flaps video. Um, so generally speaking, the order in which you have these actions, like the weight, the offset, and the curve, affect the way they interact with each other. So what you'd want to do is put the weight at the bottom. Move to the bottom. And then curve, generally speaking, above that, and you should be good. So let's take a look now. Over there, it's 23% with the um, rudder available to work, the thrust vectoring rudder. And then when I go off, it stays at 23%. So this is what you want. If you're going to have trims, you need to do your active condition, not up here in um, active condition, but actually do it over here as a curve and do it as a neutral curve and your trim still works. And that's what's important is that the trim is still working. Okay, so let's take this and do the same thing on the thrust vectoring elevator. Over here, edit, add a new action. And let's do the same thing. We're gonna do that curve. And I can use the same curve, which is that neutral curve over here. And active condition is when I want that neutral cur curve to happen, which is when I want thrust vectoring off. So this switch in the up position, that is thrust vectoring off. Okay, so let's do the same thing. Let's take curve, move it to the top. Let's take weight and move it to the bottom. Take a look down here. My elevator right now is not working. Let's go ahead and go to the middle position. Now it works, and if I needed to, I can adjust a little bit of trim for the um, thrust vectoring elevator. And when I go off of it, I still have the same amount of trim in the nozzle. There you go. So that's pretty much it. And obviously, if you want, we can add weights uh, over here. So let's go ahead and add some. Now, generally speaking, if you're going to be running a thrust vector, you're probably going to be at max rate uh, for it. But if you somehow wanted to, we can, we can absolutely do it. So let's edit this, um, ac this uh, action, which is weight over here, add a new weight, sort of the same thing in the other menu. Let's say this is my rate switch. So let's go middle position. We can have a little bit less and add a new weight and my low position, and you can have even less. You'd probably use rates just to tune it and then um, you'll, you'll end up staying with one rate when you're doing thrust vectoring stuff, I would assume. Okay, so now I've got three different weights over there. And we can also add, add a new action, Expo. So that's a curve, Expo. Over here, let's choose, I don't know, let's make it a lot so we can see it. 50. Let's take a look at this. 
So thrust vectoring on, and there's my 50%. And again, you want to make sure that curve is on top of weight. So I put, I generally put all my, my uh, curves up top near each other. So move and up. There's your rate. And you have an expo, and you can put that on a switch too and have more or less. But there you go. Um, that's pretty much it. That is a thrust vectoring setup. So I've used this on my EDF planes like the Avanti, which works really well. And it gives me the, avail the ability to just, you know, minorly adjust my trim just a little bit specifically on the thrust vector. But that's pretty much the setup right now. Let's go ahead and just take a look and just see what happens over here. So let's look at my output seven and eight over there is my thrust vectoring. I have my thrust vectoring off. And right now it works. I was able to trim my rudder and elevator thrust vector nozzles. And so those are now trimmed so it flies straight and level. And when I turn it on, now I have the ability to have thrust vectoring with some trim. So that's pretty much it, guys. If you have any questions, go ahead and email me at jose at frsky-rc.com or you could possibly leave a comment in this video. Thank you very much, guys, and have a good night.